What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. Uh, well, let's get into, into your, your number one back, as you alluded to earlier, J.K. Dobbins. Um, we have him as our second guy right, right after Taylor there. Um, I guess my first question for Dobbins is, and, and you could, I'd love to hear what you have your thoughts on him, but he had his best year this year. Obviously, there's a good offensive line in play at, at Ohio State. Most years this year was pretty decent. Uh, did a good job of rotating guys around. And then they add Justin Fields, who's obviously a huge runner. Is it a coincidence that, that Dobbins had his best year and you put a running quarterback in that backfield with him? Or did Dobbins just get that much better in, from one year? Or did he did he basically just continuously get better and, and this is just J.K. Dobbins? Is there is, Did Fields attribute to his success this year at all when you look at the numbers? Statistically attributed to it for sure. Um, I think from the standpoint of whether was he always good, I think he was always good. I just think that Ohio State does what a lot of top programs do, do which is when they recruit, they say, listen, you, if you're a top recruit, you're going to get on the field. You're going to have a role because we realize that we don't want to um, recruit top guys and then have them sit for two, three years because they're more liable to transfer somewhere else at this point. And they realize that. So they, they give rotations. And that's what creates misunderstandings about players like, Sony Michelle is the pass receiver. Nick Chubb can't catch. You know, Nick Chubb can't run outside. Sony Michelle's the outside runner. Um, right. But when it was really more of a role than it was what they can do or can't do. And it's the same thing with, I think, Ohio State. While Mike Weber really didn't, you know, really wasn't a top prospect for the NFL, he was a top sp pop prospect coming out of high school. And so I think that they felt good enough about him and then they had Master Teague and now they have, you know, they have well, Dobbins, yeah, the guy from Oklahoma, the guy transferring from Oklahoma. coming in this year. Yeah, so sermons coming there. I, I think so. Oh wow, okay. Is that, is that right? I thought I saw somebody transfer into. Yeah, I know he Ohio transferred State. somewhere, but I didn't know if that was it. But that's that'd be interesting if he is. But the but you know when you look at Dobbins, I watched a lot of him last year, you know, in 2018, and was very impressed with his skills. The TCU game against 28 in 2018, great footwork, really good skill of being able to you know, peripherally see on the periphery defenders penetrating, understanding how to get back into the, um, you know, behind his blockers and get the most out of a play. He wasn't there. He has some issues sometimes where a bounce plays outside. I joke around. It's like going to the corner store where it's, you know, they, they rely too much on their athletic ability and they get sucked into the goodies that are, that are at the corner store, but they're not good for you, you know? Right. Um, and oftentimes in the NFL, it's not very good for you to hit the <laughs> corner store. Um, so he might have some of that to contend with, but he, he has enough speed and enough burst that I think you're going to find that he, he's going to win more of those than you might realize um, because of, because of that high end athletic ability. I don't think people like the fact that he's 209 pounds. They consider, you know, big backs, they like the 215 to 225, 230 pound guys the most. Um, but he's well built. He's strong. He has terrific stiff arm, um, you know, both as a, a device to ward off people, but also push them to the ground. Um, he understands how to use leverage. He's a good receiver. And he's yeah. someone that is just big play. And his combination of feet to like really like so find solutions um, in a very efficient manner, I thought was the best in this class in terms of how he used his footwork and balance. So I, I really, the, the, the decision-making issues were more maturity as opposed to not understanding the scheme. And so he reminds me of kind of a mix of Ray Rice and LaDainian Tomlinson. Um, more Rice than <laughs> Sign Tomlinson. me up. Yeah. And so, I mean, he may never hit those heights, but I think that he will be, I think he'll be closer to Ray Rice's type of career behind a good scheme. And, and to me, he was the safest runner in this class with, in, when you think about the combination of his upside and athletic ability, conceptual skill, and that he was just a slight, you know, he's a little better blocker than, than, than um, Taylor, Taylor. And he had better ball security than Taylor. And that was really the only difference between those two. Taylor is the better runner. I'm not, I, I won't even, you know, if you're just going to talk about handing the ball off, Jonathan Taylor is the best guy in this class. If you're going to talk about being a running back and what it means to be a running back, J.K. Dobbins got a slight edge on him. 
yeah. I th- I like I like Dobbins' hands. I don't he he doesn't have any he's not like Clyde Edwards Hilaire in the in the route running ability, but like everything he just those subtle things that running backs sh- are supposed to be able to do. He's really good. I thought he had good hands. My uh, my quick very s- small summary of Dobbins was subtly sudden was kind of like just how I viewed him. Yeah. I just felt like time after time he just he didn't do a whole lot of dancing. It was quick, decisive things, and he was gone. And the acceleration's good, and the speed's good enough. I know he didn't run the combine, and some people are like, well, why didn't he run the combine? And I Because he, he had ripped Angela Clemson's on. secondary, like, <laughs> right. they were, you know. On yeah. a bum ankle. And he had a yeah. right, and he had a bad ankle. Like, I, I, I didn't know too much about him coming into that game. I'm a, I'm a Clemson alumni, so I'm heavily invested there. And, and just watching what he did to Clemson that whole game – like it was just unbelievable. I was like, man, this cat is good, and he's hurt. Like this is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah my my colleague at the rookie scouting portfolio, Mark Schofield, who is a former Wesleyan quarterback and who does mostly quarterback work, but also writes now at a um, USA Today Wire under Doug Farrar, um, and he's doing some, you know, expanding his repertoire. We were, we did a show this week on my on my podcast. And I'm going to start calling it putting down the pen moment because he said that it was, you know, he watched, there are certain plays you just watch and you put the pen down and say, that's all I need to see. Right. And, and when you see him outrun some of those Clemson workout warriors, and I don't mean that in a derogatory sense, just that they're fast and he's out able to outrun those guys on a bum ankle. You put the pen down and say, I'm done. I yeah. like it. That's all I needed that's to it. see. Yep. All right. Hated it, I mean, but loved it. Clemson better be glad he got an ankle injury. They might have not even made it to the championship game. Yeah. <laughs>